Hej alle sammen, det er Hammond her, og i dag så vil jeg gerne spille det her spil, som hedder Katowar Sojo. Det er et øh, visual novel spil, som handler omkring handicappede piger, rent nu sagt. Og nu tænker man sikkert, hvad er det for et spil? Hvad, hvad tænker du på? Jo, det er en visual novel, men problemet er mere, at der er det ikke på dansk. Og hvis I ikke kan finde ud af engelsk, så bliver det måske lidt svært for jer at kunne forstå, hvad der sker i spillet. Jeg havde tænkt mig at oversætte det, det havde jeg faktisk rigtig meget tænkt over. Men nu vil jeg prøve på dansk. Eller undskyld på engelsk og ligesom snakke den her frem sådan gennem spillet. Og jeg vil prøve nogle gange også at ligesom sige hvad der er sket imens ligesom spillet kører hen ad vejen. Og øhm, igen, jeg har tænkt på et format hvor jeg vil prøve at faktisk at oversætte hele spillet på dansk faktisk. For det er det et spil alle må prøve. Øhm, forhåbentlig så er det jeg kan få flere til at spille det her spil. Ved hjælp af min let's play. Eller min gameplay. Jeg ved ikke om jeg skal lave en let's play af det. Men nu ser jeg. Jeg vil starte med det og så kan jeg se, så kan jeg se hvad folk synes om det. Så, lad os starte fra begyndelsen. Katwa Shoujo. A light breeze causes the naked branches overhead to rattle like wooden wind chimes. Og det er meget sådan... Det er en meget billedsprogligt spil også. Men der kommer meget billedsprog og meget... Ikke filosofi, men sådan meget billedsprog, ja. Så I skal, hvis I har lært noget dansk, så er det nu, I skal bruge det. This is a popular retreat for couples in the summer. The deciduous trees provide a beautiful green canopy, far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. But now, in late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent them from numbing in this cold. <sighs> Just how long am I expected to wait out here anyway? I'm sure the note said 4 p.m. Ah yes, the note slipped between the pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches goes, I'm more of a fan of the letter in the locker, but at least this way shows a bit of initiative. As I ponder the meaning of the note, the snowfall gradually thickens. Snowflakes silently falling from the white painted sky are the only sign of time passing in this stagnant world. The slow descent upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time was slow to a crawl. The rustling of dry snow underfoot startled me, startles me, interrupting the quiet mood. Someone is approaching me from behind. So, who came? A hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognize the owner of the dangly voice instead. I feel my heart skip the beat. It's a voice I've listened to hundreds of times, but never as more than an eavesdropper to a conversation. I turn my face to this voice, the voice of my dreams, and the heart begins to race. And so he saw that. Iwanako, I got a note telling me to wait here. It was yours? Damn it, I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line. And then what's the result? <laughs> Pathetic. Oh yes, I asked a friend to give you that note. I'm so glad you got it. I saw a joyous smile that makes me so tense. I couldn't move a single muscle, even if I tried. Him now, as if it were trying to burst out from the chest and claim the skull for itself. So, uh, here we are, out in the cold. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches. The cacophonous voice is music to my ears. Iwana Kuf flinches ever so softly against the gust of wind. As it passes, she writes herself, as if supposed by some new confidence, as supported by some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine, and she lazily twirls her long, dark hair around her finger. All the while, the anxious beating of my heart grows louder, grows louder. My throat is tight, I doubt I could 
even force a word out if I tried. You see? I wanted to know. If you would go out with me. I stand there. Emotion. Safe from a pounding heart. I want to say something in reply. But my vocal cord feels like they have been stretched beyond the breaking point. <laughs> He's out. I reach up to try to measure it to my throat. But this only sits spikes of binding pain along my arms. He's out. <laughs> my whole body freezes. Save for my eyes, which shoot and open in terror. Heart starts and stops, and I go weak at the knees. The world around me, the canopy of bare branches, the dull winter sky, the wanako running towards me, all these fade to black. The last thing I remember before slipping away are the sounds of Iwanako screaming for help and the incessant clatter of the branches above. I start put eventure. Som jeg håber, I vil være med til. Det vil ikke blive langt. Forhåbentlig. Jeg vil stoppe sådan efter, man, efter en lidt flere tekster. Og så kan I sige jeres mening omkring det spil. Basically, så er det, det spil handler omkring fyren her, som har fået den her hjerteproblem. Han har den her hjertesygdom, som er umulig at helbrede. Men stadigvæk, lægerne prøver at helbrede ham. Ved at lave rigtig mange hvad det, operationer på ham. Men de virker så ikke særlig godt. Så han er nødt til at blive i det her hospital, skolehospital, for at ja, leve sin resten af sin dag. Så ja, det her spil det er blevet faktisk lavet af folk fra Fortran af, hvis ikke nogen af jer kender til den side. Det er faktisk et rigtig, rigtig fedt initiativ. Jeg tror faktisk, det har været i... Det er faktisk over syv år siden, den er blevet udgivet. Jeg mener faktisk, det er 2007. Jeg er, ikke, jeg er faktisk ikke så sikker. Men det er faktisk noget tid, rigtig lang tid siden, og det har været en udvikling i rigtig lang tid, også i fire år måske, på det er rigtigt. Men i hvert fald, det her spil, det er et spil, som forhåbentlig kommer til at inspirere jer rigtig meget til at spille. Fordi det her, det er et spil, som jeg synes i hvert fald personligt, er en af de bedste visioner om at spille. Mest fordi også det er gratis, men også fordi at historien er god. Så jeg synes, I burde prøve den af. It's been four months since my heart attack. Så det har været fire måneder siden. Since has and sister uh, yeah, stop. Well, yeah, then, guys. In that whole time, I can probably count the times I've left, left this hospital room unsupervised on one hand. Four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts. So I've had plenty of time to come to the terms of with my situation. Arrhythmia. Arrhythmia. A strange word. A foreign, alien one. One that you don't want to be in the same room with. A rare condition causes the heart to act erratically at occasion, occasion, occasionally beat way too fast. It can be fatal. Apparently, I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle I was able to go on for so long without anything happening. Anything happen. Is that really a miracle? I I guess it was supposed to make me feel better, more appreciative of my life. It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. My parents, I think, were hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two hemophilus at peace. So, so there are the results that he has got bleeding. So he has, so he has got these bleeding. So he has got these bleeding. So Ja, det er, eller hans forældre har fået blødninger af det. I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. So then, it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. Of course, there wasn't even a cure. There isn't even a cure. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatment. When I was first admitted, it felt like as if I was missed. For about a week, my room in the ward was full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But the visitors soon dwindled, dwindled, and all the get well, get well gift 
parts began trickling down to nothing shortly after. I realized that only reason I had gotten so many cards and flowers was because seemingly their sympathy had been turned into a class project. Oh wow, so you know, maybe some people are gen were genuinely concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I barely had visitors, but at the end of the first month, only my parents came by on a regular basis. Iwanako was the last to, drop vis to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We, were, we never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. We didn't, even touch, we didn't even touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. The hospital? It's not really a place I'd like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess it's because they, were in a, they are in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them. But it makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I was able to leave. He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but told me to wait and see if the treatment was su and surgeries worked. So I idly observed the scar and those surgeries had left on my chest slowly changed their appearance over time, thinking of it as some kind of an omen. I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving, but my expectations are low enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around, the answer shows that there is at least some hope. At some point I stopped watching TV. I don't know why, I just did. Uh, maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for my situation. I started reading instead. There was a small library there at the hospital, although it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I would go back for some more. Yeah. I found that I liked reading, and I think I even became a bit addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands, but I loved the stories. That was what my life was like. Days became increasingly harder to distinguish, distinguish from each other, differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. I felt like blurred into some kind of gooey mess. I was trapped inside instead of moving within. A week could go by without me really noticing it. Sometimes I pause in realization that I didn't know what day of the week it was. But other times, all the things that surrounded me would pay for the crash into my consciousness. Through the barrier of nonchalance, I had to set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hard, and the heaviness in my chest would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside just to lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling, as if I was almost going to cry. But that happened only rarely and I couldn't even try. Today the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited but not very. It's like he's trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I've last seen them. Both of them are even sort of sort of dressed up. Is this some, supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not a party. There is this ritual that the head cardiologist has. He takes his time sorting his papers and then setting them aside as if to make a point of the pointlessness of what he just did. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine and looks at me in the eyes for a moment. <clears throat> Hello, Isao. How are you today? I don't answer him, but I smile a little back at him. I believe that you could go home. Your heart is stronger now. And with some precautions you should be fine. We we'll have all your medications sorted out. I'll give your father the prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad, whose expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. So many. I take it from his hand and take a look at myself, feeling numb. I'm supposed to react to this. Oh gud, alle de ting han skal tage bare for at overleve. Det er absurdt at lave en lang liste af medication. 
medication staring back at me from the paper seems insurmountable. They all blend together in a sea of letters. And the like, a sea of letters of the bus like it how a or This is insane. Side effects, adverse effects, contradictions and dosages are listed line after line with cold precision. I try to read them but it's so futile. I can't understand any of it. Attending to only makes me feel sicker. All this for the rest of my life. Every day? I'm afraid that is the best we can do at this point. However, new medications are always being developed, so I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over at the times. Yes, what kind of confidence boost is that? I would have felt better if I hadn't said anything at all. Also, I've spoken with your parents, and we believe it would be best if you don't return to your old school. What? Please calm down yourself. Listen to what the doctor has to say. <laughs> oh, the father. Calm down? How? The, the way he says it tells me he knew full well that I wouldn't like it. Am I going to be homeschooled? What am I, whatever my con whatever my con concern shows, it's ignored. You all understand. Oh, sorry for. You all understand that your education is paramount. However, I don't think that it's wise for you to be without supervision. At least not until we're sure that your medication is suitable. So I've spoken to your parents about the transfer. It's a school called Yamaku Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled? What? A -a am I? There's 24 hours nursing staff and it's only a few minutes from the highly regarded general hospital. The majority of students live in their own campus. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's, it's designed to give students a degree of independence while keeping help nearby. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. Don't try to disguise that fact. If it was really that free. There wouldn't be a 24-hour nursing staff, and you wouldn't make a hospital being nearby a selling point. Of course, that only if you want to go, but your mother and I aren't really able to homeschool you. We went out there and had a look for a couple of weeks back. I think you'd like it. It looks like I really don't have a choice. Compared to the other heart problems, people with the condition usually tend to live long lives. You need a job one day, and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamn opportunity. Well, should you be excited at the chance to go back to school, I remember you wanted to return to school. And while it's... And while it's not the same one. A special school? That's an insult. That's what I wanted to say. It's a step down. It's not what you think. All of the students here are pretty active in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help in one way or another. The father's right. And many of the grad and many of the graduates of the school have gone to do amazing things. To do many amazing things, a person doesn't have to be held back by the disability. One of my colleagues in another hospital is a grad graduate. I don't care. A person doesn't have to be held back by the dis held back by the disability. That's what a disability is. I really hate that something so important was decided for me. But what can I do about it? A normal life is out of the question now. It's funny. I always had thought. I was thought my life was actually kind of boring, but now I miss it. I want to protest, but I want to blame this lack of reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell out something now, something about how I could go back to the school anyway, but no. I don't say anything. The fact that it is unknown now, it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of all this. The hospitals, doctors. I had conditioned everything. I don't see anything that would be make me feel indifferent. 
that really isn't a choice. I know this, but the thought of going to a disabled school, what are those even like? As, as, as much as I try to put a positive spin on this, it's very difficult. But let me try. A clean slate isn't a bad thing. That is all I can think of to get me through this. At least I still have something, even if it's a special school. It's something. It's a fresh start, and my life isn't over. It would be a mistake to just resign myself to think that. At the very least, I will try to see what my new life, a new life looks like. Og med det, så vil jeg gerne stoppe den her lille øhm, gameplay. Hvis nogen af jer gerne vil se med mere på det her, så vil jeg anbefale, at I øhm, kiggede med. Og det siger, hvis du til lækker. Sikke en skøn dag. I dag er i dag. Nå, lige meget. Men, u- <laughs> Men uanset hvad, så øhm, håber jeg i hvert fald, at I kunne lide det her. Og jeg håber, at I vil kigge med videre på det, og hvis I ikke kan lide det, og vi gerne have, at jeg snakker på en anden måde, eller prøver at oversætte det, eller et eller andet, jamen så sig det endelig. Og så håber jeg, at I alle sammen vil have en mega fed dag. Så vi ses til næste gang. Peace!